It is just 2 o'clock, and we know several folks will be joining us in the next few minutes, but we would like to get started in the interest of time. So we'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. We're big believers in the power of social media, and for that reason, we'd like to invite any or all of you to get connected Please note that we do have Twitter handles at the Patterson Foundation and Margin underscore Mission and two hashtags, TPF Margin Mission and hashtag Earned Income. If you would feel so inclined to tweet, please do so. And if you would like to post on Facebook, we'd like you to do that as well. You can feel free to do it during today's webinar or afterwards. And for anybody who is particularly prolific at tweeting and posting, we're going to make a offer that at the end of our four webinars, whoever is most prolific will be the winner of a prize. I'm not going to say exactly what that prize is yet, but please feel free to use social media and spread the word about earned income. This is the first of a series of four webinars, and we would like to welcome you to it. It's all focused on earned income, a topic that's near and dear to our heart, and it is titled Understanding Earned Income in Today's Nonprofit Environment. We'd like to welcome all of you. We're delighted that you're here and have joined us. We have nearly a full house today on this webinar. Almost 100 participants are joining us uh, from a variety of nonprofits in the four county region, Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, and DeSoto counties. And you represent a wide variety of organizations, and we've got executive directors and CEOs, we've got board members, and we also have staff members and other stakeholders. As we get started, we would like to share a quote from Melinda Gates, somebody who we hold in great esteem. And her belief is that helping people doesn't have to be an unsound financial strategy. We share that belief as well, and we believe it's just a good way to introduce the topic of earned income. As we launch our webinar series today, I'd like to just call attention to the fact that this is supported by the Patterson Foundation as part of their initiative called Margin and Mission Ignition, and I'll share more about that in a moment. But today's webinar, as I indicated, is all about earned income, as are the remaining webinars in the series of four. But we will focus on understanding earned income in today's nonprofit environment. It's also just important to note that today is really intended to be a primer. We will not go into extensive detail, given our time limitations, but we'll certainly share enough information to help folks who are on this webinar understand earned income a bit more than perhaps you may have already. As I indicated, Margin and Mission Ignition is an initiative of the Patterson Foundation. Some of you may be familiar with it. For those of you who are not, it's an initiative that's really focused on helping nonprofits increase their thriveability. And what we mean by thriveability in the context of this initiative is helping nonprofits to grow their entrepreneurial capacity, be more entrepreneurial, helping them boost their revenue from earned income, and as a result, heightening their mission impact. All critical to what we believe is making, helping nonprofits be more thrivable and stronger. I'm one of the presenters during today's webinar. My name is Michael Oxman, and I'm a managing partner and principal with No Margin, No Mission, a consulting practice that has been retained for the past several years by the Patterson Foundation. And we're thrilled to partner with the Patterson Foundation on this initiative. My name is Larry Clark. I'm also a managing 
and partner at No March No Mission. Uh, I'm in Seattle today. The weather's uh, sunny, and uh, we're, we're we're feeling good. So welcome everyone, and we're glad you could join us. Also joining us for today's webinar are two of our partners from the Patterson Foundation, Michael Corley, who is the senior consultant for administration, and Josephine Eisenberg, who is initiative support for margin and mission ignition at, at the Patterson Foundation. They will say hello in the chat box, so just uh, please call attention to the chat box over the course of the, of the rest of this webinar. And a few things to note before we get into today's webinar, as we're sharing about earned income today, the line is muted, so we're doing that just to minimize the background noise and conversation, and we do ask that you note your questions as we go in the chat box. And as you do that, uh, we will be capturing those and at the, uh, toward the end of today's webinar, during our Q&A, we'll answer as many of those questions as time allows. So again, if you have comments or questions as uh, we go, please note them in the chat box and we will address those in the Q&A. So with that, uh, just a comment about today's goals. Again, we're focused on the topic of earned income. So our goals for you today are to, one, understand the importance of earned income, which many of you do already, uh, but we do hope that uh, uh, you'll walk away with at least something new after today's webinar, perhaps something that you weren't aware of or that you didn't know. Also, another goal for today is how earned income contribute to your organization's thrivability. So as we're talking, Please think about it in, in the context of your own organization and either things that you may be doing or not be doing and how you might be able to uh, elevate those within the context of your own team and your own organization. So let's get started. One of the things that we know and understand just through our own work in earned income, which we've done quite extensively over the course of the many past years, is that when leaders in nonprofit organizations, board members, and other stakeholders are asked about their biggest concern, they say almost always that it's fundraising. And our response to that is particularly in today's nonprofit environment is that nonprofit organizations really truly need diverse revenue streams to build greater strength and thrivability. So as we think about fundraising, how do we look at opportunities to diversify the revenue streams that comprise that? So to ground everybody in a definition of what we believe is important in terms of diverse revenue, it's essentially having multiple forms of income without relying on any one single source for an organization's financial livelihood. And importantly, it's a means to reduce financial risk just what it be, as it would be for anyone's individual investment portfolios. And while we know this may be common knowledge for many of you, we do believe it's important to set some context before we dive into the topic of earned income, particularly as it relates to nonprofit organizations. So when we talk about earned income, we really like to start the conversation by saying, that we all know that income from grants and donations and other means of traditional fundraising activities are often necessary. But we also know, particularly uh, in these times, that they're increasingly difficult to come by and they're challenging to, to sustain for the long term. It's a competitive marketplace that we're in, lots of nonprofits out there that are competing for the same pool of dollars. Of course, if you add to that, that those funds from grants and donations frequently are restricted in terms of how they can be spent. And then as many of us know from what happened starting in 2007 and for several years after, when the economy weakens, that if we're overly reliant on grants and donations, it can make us as nonprofits vulnerable. And one thing we'd like you to note, if you're not aware of it, is that we believe an organization is at risk if more than 30% of your funding is coming from a single source. Jot that down because it's something that you may want to take a look at. Your organization may be at risk if more than 30% of that funding is coming from a single source. So for many organizations, this thing we called earned income, 
really does offer an opportunity to add a new stream of re revenue or an unrestricted stream of revenue to the balance sheet. So we say that it's really important for every nonprofit organization to understand what the revenue pie actually looks like. And if you haven't looked at your revenue pie recently and looked at the individual slices that comprise it, we certainly encourage you to do that. A critical first step for organizations that may be thinking about how to add new streams of revenue to their overall revenue pie. And once you've done that, through that understanding, you may discover that either the absence or the presence of earned income may offer some insight that would help guide its pursuit. So let's dive into the, the topic of earned income and start by just defining what it is. And just to be clear, because we do get this question frequently, uh, we, wanna, we just want to remind everybody of what earned income is not. And as we just shared a few minutes ago, grants and donations, which are a, uh, they are an essential part of the total revenue for many nonprofits, they are not earned income. So here's the definition that we like to use when we talk about earned income. And it's very simple. Earned income is payments received in direct exchange for a product or a service. Very simple. And there are three types of earned income, all of which nonprofit organizations can act upon in terms of their own earned income activities. The first is products and services, which is probably the most familiar. The second is what we call capital, or we also call it facilities and investments. And the third is called intellectual assets. And we're gonna dive into each of those with a bit of detail. So when we talk about the first type of earned income, we talk about products and services. And not surprisingly, they cover a gamut of different earned income activities. Everything from trainings and workshops to educational materials, retail operations, food service, consulting, technical assistance, membership, events, software, books, data and analysis. And this is just a short list. Honestly, the list of products and services can go on and on, and it's only limited by the imaginations of those who are in the nonprofit sector. Let us share a few examples of organizations that we have worked with and do work with as part of our Margin and Mission Ignition initiative. The first of which is for this wonderful retail store called Peepers that's part of Lighthouse of Minnesota. Peepers essentially is a brick and mortar store that's housed in the Lighthouse offices, and they sell everything that is geared to helping individuals with their low vision needs. And ultimately, the sale of all the merchandise in that Peepers store goes to support the mission of Lighthouse of Minnesota A wonderful store, and more importantly, over the course of the past three years, this operation has generated upwards of $300,000 in revenue contributing to the mission and the operations of the Lighthouse of Minnesota. And we'd like to underscore the fact, too, that it goes well beyond just the financial return. There are so many other positives that have occurred as a result of this retail store, just in terms of marketing, visibility, uh, and new folks who come to the Lighthouse just to visit the retail store. A second example, Pines of Sarasota. Many of you are familiar with the organization. A large organization, upwards of 400 full-time employees, very substantial operating budget. Their Education and Training Institute, which is a division of the Pines of Sarasota, developed a wonderful assortment of senior care education and training products. And many of them have become the number one products in their category to help caregivers better work with and understand their clients who suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's. 
a, through a series of, of uh, webinars, through a series of streamed videos and DVDs, this organization has developed a significant stream of revenue, upwards of $300,000 annually, to help them support the mission of Pines of Sarasota. And of course, uh, a number of other positives that have occurred as a result of their earned income work, not the least of which is having established new financial management systems, adding new staff, and a number of other positive outcomes. The third organization we'd like to um, share with you is Charlotte County Habitat for Humanity. And as many of you know, Habitat for Humanities have resale stores. They actually have four in Charlotte County currently. They were getting calls on a regular basis for people to come, uh, for organizations to come and clean out their house and to take the items that were left behind. So created a business plan around that. Um, and that was done about a year and a half ago. And they've generated about $110,000 in, in revenue at this point in time from the resale business. And that's done through a contract to clean the house out and then also reselling the items that were in the home um, through the resale operations. They've added staff, they've added equipment, and they've greatly enhanced their marketing and sales functions by doing this. So those are three examples of products and services from organizations that we've worked with. Let us move on to the second type of earned income, which we call capital. And just to briefly define what capital earned income activities are, they're from an asset or a wealth in the form of property or money that's accumulated or used in a business by an organization, a partnership, a corporation, or an individual. So when you think about your organizations, if you own a building, if you own equipment, if you own other types of assets that can somehow generate earned income or revenue for your nonprofit organization, that would fall into this category called capital. The first example we'll provide is the Manatee Performing Arts Center. And many of you have probably attended a theater performance there up in Bradenton. As one of our clients, they have a very large facility and um, it was empty some of the time when they're not uh, actually having a performance or they're not practicing for a performance or having rehearsals. So they created a business plan around actually renting their space out um, during those off times. They've generated about $250,000 in rental sales at this point. Um, they've added staff, they added new management software for the facility, and also included some visual technology to enhance the rental space for those that are renting it out. Another organization that we've worked with, Historic Spanish Point, which is based in Osprey, Florida, has been around for many, many years. It is a wonderful venue that is on the waterfront and actually was the historic home of Bertha Palmer. So for those of you history buffs who may know of Bertha Palmer, one of the original uh, winter snowbirds um, to Florida, she left this wonderful venue, which in turn over the years has become a uh, more and more of a in-demand location for folks who want to have weddings and host other events there. And as a result, uh, a site rental business was launched by Historic Spanish Point through our work with them. And over the course of the past two years, this organization has generated about, uh, well, in excess of $220,000 in revenue from just from their wedding and site rentals. So it's a, another way for the organization to support their mission and the good work that they do by having some diverse revenue coming in to the organization. The third type of earned income that we'd like to share is called intellectual assets. And intellectual assets are essentially the skills, the knowledge, and the experience of staff that a nonprofit can use for purposes of earned income activities. So a couple of examples. So the first example is Attendance Works. They're an organization that's focused on increasing attendance in K-12 schools, uh, and they're based in San Francisco. The project's been supported by the Patterson Foundation, and our focus is to helping them um, 
create a consulting practice. They were getting three to five calls a day and still getting three to five calls a day from school districts throughout the country saying, help us, we don't know what to do. And Attendance Works has research and a model in place to do just that. They're projecting once their consulting business is launched, which is in the next month or so, to generate around 300000 in their first year of consulting sales. The second group we'd like to profile in terms of intellectual assets is called Center for Disaster Philanthropy, another national organization. This is actually based in Washington, D.C., and also through the Patterson Foundation, we've had the good fortune of working with them on earned income and business planning. They, too, through their business plan, identified an opportunity to launch a consulting business which offers technical assistance as well, and largely for those organizations that are in both the foundation and philanthropic world, but are focused on or interested in disaster giving. And as a result of the interest, the many inquiries that this organization had from a number of foundations and philanthropies, it became clear that offering their expertise, their knowledge, and their know-how to these foundations and philanthropic organizations to help them better focus their, their, giving, their disaster giving dollars made absolute sense. And as a result, just over the past year, this organization's generated in excess of $250,000 in earned revenue just from their consulting. And as the uh, new year has launched in 2018, it looks like they're on track to almost double that revenue. So after sharing a few examples with you about the three different types of earned income, we wanted to also share with you a few other things to think about. We're frequently asked a number of questions about earned income, many of which may be on your minds. The first being, is earned income taxable? Which is a great question. And as you think about your own earned income, there's two ways to think about them. One is if your earned income activity or your venture is mission related, in other words, that it does focus on and reinforce your mission, it would be tax exempt. If on the other hand, your earned income activity is not mission related and is not directly supporting the mission of your organization, it would be taxable. And in both cases, generating earned income from these types of activities is perfectly acceptable. What we always encourage you to do, however, is if you ever have a question about or a concern about whether your earned income idea or activity is or isn't mission related, it's something that you would want to talk to your tax professional with and really have a good conversation because it really truly does depend on how you are supporting the mission of your organization through that earned income activity. Another question that we're frequently asked is, what type of nonprofit organizations are best suited to earned income? And the answer to that question is really uh, in three different forms. One is, they really do come in all different shapes and sizes. There's so many different nonprofits that we've worked with over the course of the past several years, and they really fit a number of different profiles in terms of their shapes, their size, and what they look like. They come from all sectors in the nonprofit world, and they are comprised of a whole multitude of different missions. So we always say to nonprofits, there is no one type of organization that's best suited. But we do acknowledge that, and this is important to note, that the organizations that are most successful at earned income typically have a few key ingredients. The first of which is they've identified a strong and viable product or service offering. And as we, as we think about that within our own organizations, we always encourage you to say, what do we have? that we might be giving away for free or selling at low cost because those are viable, potentially viable opportunities for earned income. Or what do we think might be a potentially good product or service offering and uh, what does that look like? 
The second is the desire to dedicate time, energy, and resources to doing earned income and doing it well. It does require the focus, the dedication, the time to do it, and it's not for the faint of heart. And I think every organization that we've worked with that has been successful at earned income will tell you that. And then thirdly, also importantly, is that organizations really have to be prepared for earned income. And we believe there's a, a whole sort of set of criteria around what that looks like. But with this webinar series being structured the way it is, those are topics for our next earned income webinars. And we would like to encourage you to tune in to our remaining three webinars, the next of which will be on Tuesday, March 13th, where we will dive into the topic of identifying the right earned income venture. It's a question that's on the minds of many nonprofit leaders, board members, and other stakeholders. So we will now go to your questions in the chat box. And I will turn it over to Larry. Uh, and again, as we said, we will answer as many of those questions as we can. Anybody have a question? I don't see any posted as of now. So if you do have a question, oh, Connie has one. May I invite others to the webinars? Absolutely, you can. So please share the information. Have them register with Josephine at the foundation just as you did. Uh, um, please share um, the information with others. Other questions? Uh, Chris, Christine has one. They're, now they're flying by fast. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being inclusive. You are welcome. Uh, Morgan uh, has a question. Could you please repeat again the third item needed for success? Mike, could you go back a couple of slides? That would be organizational preparedness for it. Uh, and we'll talk about what that means in um, an upcoming webinar. Our goal today was really to talk about earned income definition, why it's important, and how it can help your nonprofit be more thrivable. But our goal is to really dive into each of these topics in our subsequent webinars so we can really spend some time to do that. And I can probably ask, uh, answer Connie and uh, Luisa's at the same time, which is, yes, we're going to post um, uh, this webinar since it was recorded on the Patterson Foundation website as well as on the No Margin No Mission website, um, and you'll receive a link to that um, shortly. Um, so uh, if you're inviting others, they can easily catch up that way. Donna wants to know if you have any examples of organizations that have membership as earned income. And we do have examples of those, um, and maybe we can share one of those on one of the subsequent webinars. Um, Morgan said thank you. Connie said in other words, um, in other words, will the session be available for viewing again? Yes. So yes, um, it will be up online and you'll be able to uh, view the whole thing again. Uh, Keenan said, we have a strong membership dues, but I can't seem to get all of the members participating in the fundraising effort. Am I pricing my members out of participating? That's a good question. And membership is tricky when you have to balance um, how much their membership is versus what they're getting for their membership. And uh, later in the webinar series, or as we move forward with the initiative, if you participate, we'll dive into that a bit more. Or if you want to send us a note separately, we might be able to answer that question a bit better for you. Uh, membership is tricky though, as you know. And you're, you're living that right now. Just one comment on membership. When we do work with organizations, they frequently talk about uh, looking at tiered levels of pricing for members. So as you look at nonprofit organizations, you look at their operating budgets, there always is an opportunity to um, define your pricing based on those tiered levels. So larger nonprofit organizations with bigger operating budgets uh, who may have more members may pay one price versus the smaller organizations with fewer 
potential members and lower operating budgets may pay a lower price. So again, without knowing how you're uh, currently pricing your membership, that's just something to think about. Krista had a question. Uh, how do you prepare your board of directors to spend time on researching um, earned income? And I think part of it, and Mike can jump into this too, is it, it's so important to educate your board as you move through um, participating in it. So we really like board members to be involved as we develop business plans with the organizations. As we move forward with the initiative, you'll see that board members have to be involved um, uh, as part of our process. You know, you want an advocate at the board level. And you know to get them involved early, um, to educate them, and to um, you know get a buy-in early because the last thing you want is to move forward, get excited about something, and then the board shuts you down. And that's maybe happened to you um, in other other ventures in your nonprofit. But we really try to keep the board members um, entertained through the whole process. And but directly related anything? to that, you know, a good opportunity for you is to invite your board members to participate in these webinars. So these upcoming webinars um, that remain would be a, a, a terrific way just to uh, immerse them in the topic of earned income and engage them in the discussion in these early stages. And Connie and Donna and Keenan are all, all saying thanks. That was the last question. Good. Okay. Well then, um, let's keep moving. So as we close this webinar today, we just want to uh, reinforce and remind you that it has been recorded. Uh, a link will be available for viewing soon on the Patterson Foundation website. And we will also be recording and posting all future webinars for your reference. And as we said earlier, please feel free Thanks. to share these webinar links with Hi, colleagues Jack. and peers. Pardon? Go ahead, Mike. We would just like to wrap by thanking everybody, and we certainly appreciate your participation today. We do hope that you'll join us for our next webinar and then subsequent webinars after that. Just to remind everyone, next Tuesday, March 13th, we'll be diving into the topic of how to identify the right earned income venture. For those of you who would like to invite your colleagues your peers to register for the upcoming webinars, please feel free to do so, but they must register so we do have their information uh, in our database. Again, uh, if anybody has any questions after today's webinar, we please, we would er encourage you to reach out to our, ourselves, Larry and myself, we hear our email addresses, and we'll be happy to um, follow up and get back to you. So again, on behalf of the Patterson Foundation, we thank you for participating in today's webinar. We hope you all have learned at least something new, and we look forward to your participation next week. Thanks, all.